My work is a race, social injustice, and police brutality. Crimey, slimy, blimey, or CSB for short, is a primary figure within my work. CSB is a character of my creation that is inspired by Little Black Sambo, the racist caricature of African Americans. Both Little Black Sambo and Blackface fall into racial stereotyping. These caricatures are created in American history to demean and dehumanize African Americans. I use myself as a reference for CSB often where his body language is self-reflected of me. I use CSB as a medium to talk about politics, form of expression, and branding. The process as well as trial and error are important to my body of work slash studio practice. I have an impulse to create in different styles and processes. I employ a motif of using multiple materials when creating work as well as combining multiple images to convey a message. CSB being depicted differently refers to code switching in different mediums. Code switch referring to alter alternating between two or more languages or varieties of languages in a conversation. My work is a reflection of an internal and external struggle when creating. The struggle relates balancing both covert and overt energy within my work. Work depicted in different forms revolves around the concept of entropy or a sense of unpredictability when viewing the work. My process focuses on levels of consciousness and subconscious when making the work. In my collage race work, these different modes of, of making are present. Analog collages are spawned by using images from products, advertisements, newspapers, magazines, and the internet. Re referencing popular culture, I recontextualize these images for my work. Images are impulsively selected and then placed on a ground-based route on what catches my attention. The finished collage is then scanned and upscaled larger, larger scale. A larger painting confronts the viewer with overwhelming layers of images and text. Working on collage paintings, I subconsciously decide whether to render or render the image either photo-referential or abstracted. While creating the collage painting, I wear optical lenses to visually disrupt my vision when painting. The 3D or chroma depth glasses plays with stereo, messing with one of the eyes, throwing it off a little, and allowing to perceive color differently. The optical lenses are a metaphor for how people are viewing me and the work through a predisposed perspective. I want the viewer to sit with my work and uncover the way I perceive the world that I live in. Let's hop between each of the images and then Len, um, you go ahead and give us a brief summary on okay. this image. Okay. This one, I can say the, the idea was, was for an assignment is to create uh, an expression, something that gives off an expression. And so for me, I've always been interested in collages. And so I just, well, well, the process of this piece started as, is that I just collaged a bunch of images on top of a, a surface. And then over time, I just began to see what can make this uh, this image pop more? So adding the cartoonish as well as actual objects from products that I uh, actually use, so like Sprite or like magazines and stuff like that. Is there anything else you want me to go into detail about? Um, no, I think we can start up with questions now. Um, do you want to do it? Do we want to do this each one or build up to it? Let's do the work and then ask for one to start on. Or if there's a specific one you want us to start on, Renaissance? Um, we can just go through them all and then I can talk about a specific one after we go through them all. Okay. okay. This is my, that one's my favorite. Can't mm -hmm. mind. So well done. <laughs> I also think it's important to mention the size of these because these are huge and like like thinking about them like that I know you mentioned in your uh, artist statement that 
the could they confront the viewer because of their size like more than your smaller collages that you make them from i remember mm -hmm. you talking about the process and how long it took to make them mm -hmm. so what is your general process with collaging do you start with an idea is it does the idea change over time um do you just find one thing and run with it or um, let's say it's it's weird with me. It's like very impulsive. So like I'm the type of person that say I'm gonna do this and like I stick to it, and so I have to uh, problem solve with that idea. So for instance, I'll say let's do one about police brutality. So I just go through a bunch of images that I like or uh, attract attention to me. So for instance, I say a lot of it is like impulsive or unconsciously. So certain things that don't make sense like to like a, a random person but they relate to me so it's like the combination between like dreams and visuals that i've seen but there's things that if you add them up all together it creates this like message but it's like like i explained in the the statement about there's a sense of entropy where it doesn't make sense or like there's a sense of unpredictability but that that's the joy i think about creating is that i have like no specific goal it's just how many different ways I can explain the, the issue. So it's just like adding, just picking things that catch my eye and just placing it randomly. And then it ends up making uh, a nice composition. Would yeah. you say that um, like your way of layering it and like, uh, like, you know, you said you're choosing what um, draws you, is this like part of just this body of work or is it something that, that you identify with and you and most of your work because I mean this brings a lot of uh, feelings of like chaos and hysteria and um, I think that's really what helps draw attention to these pieces especially with, um, with what they're about it really kind of um, pretty much grabs my eye immediately so is that something that you wanted to do with this specific type of work or something that you do often? I think uh, something that I do often but I think it's more focused within like the collage work specifically because there's just so many images scattered around the whole entire composition. But I think that's how my mind works. Like I am very, a very tactile person. Like I can't like fixate on one thing. That's why there's all these different forms of mediums because I just can't fixate on just doing one thing because I just want to do more. It's like, why stop at one thing when you can do it so many other ways? Um, I have a question about, could you go to Eliana? Um, world's highest. Um, <clears throat> wait, I forget the title of it. It's no smiley problem. faces in a car. The page. Oh, this one. Just tell me the slide number. I was just gonna jump. Yeah. Um. So, um, as you mentioned in your artist statement about having CSB is that what you meant like he is a he is the code switch or I guess my question is um with the smiley face I see it a lot in some of your paintings and I was wondering if that was also like one of your code switching sort of um entities I guess Okay. Yeah, I'd say um, they aren't like one in the same. I'd say this is, it's a narrative. It's like a bigger narrative. So like these characters are the, the corrupts. So I like to represent like corrupt corruption in society. So for me, I thought about using the smiley face because a lot of my work uh, sophomore year was primarily focused on the police. So I always used to draw police uh, with smiley faces with X's out in their eyes. And so for now, I would like to expand on that because it's, corruption isn't just within the police. It's like within society as a whole, like uh, it's a mom and a child. It's a, it's a college student, it's a doctor. Like there's all forms of corruption within society, but my my way of depicting corruption is showing this like very uncanny smiley face that's like on it's in between like being like an actual part of the face or just like a mask but it's it's in between so i'd say these are the bad guys
because in my narrative in CSB it is like an outcast, like he's outcasted from society because they think, because the race, um, because society, the corrupt society is like a very racist society. And so like the, the corrupt characters are the oppressors that want to keep him in low and at low. And I would say that CSB is like uh, exposing the sense of corruption and the unjust things happening within society. So he's like, I'd say CSB is a product of racial profiling, a uh, process of not really feeling that you can identify with a specific being. Like what's interesting I'd say about CSB is that he is not a, a, a black sample character, but he is based off of that and he's stuck on He's stuck on being that his influence. So I'd say where at CSB isn't, he's an anomaly. Like he can be anything that I want him to be because I think when he's green, for instance, the green makes the character just view as alien or unrecognizable or people just view it as a cartoon character. But when I switch it specifically, when he has like black skin and red lips, people will automatically get to that idea. And I think it's weird how people will only get to that specific idea if I allude to that. So that's where I think these characters fall in line as in they view him as that character, as that black, black Sambo character, but he's just like a normal guy. Like he has bones like we do. If that answers your question, I'm not sure. Did that answer your question, Jared? Yeah. Um, I also just wanted to comment and say that the way you painted this is just so good like it's i couldn't imagine like this being any better what was your that being said what is your specific painting process for something like this because this is obviously like, you have you've had an inspiration off of an older vintage photo that just obviously spoke to you and mm -hmm. the that you were trying to get to with mm -hmm. the theme of the painting mm -hmm. so what was your what what's your process look like for that um, my process with these, for instance, is, well, the style is like photo referential, so it looks like a photograph, but I like to keep it like, uh, I like to show you some of the rawness of like how you can see the, the unpainted canvas throughout the piece. So it's basically, it's just like building up layers. And I think with my process, like I like to share it with my audience. So like on my social media, like I constantly show uh, a process of how it gets to uh, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Like I am just, in I'm just as interested with the middle, uh, the end, and the beginning because it's interesting to see how this thing changes. Because uh, underneath all this paint, there's just like sloppiness, and it's really interesting how constantly layering something over and over again creates this different process. So it's more these. When I do photo referential or naturalistic paintings, it's more of a slow process of slowly building over and over and over again. I think uh, I use this method as a way of practicing my technical skill of like getting, learning how to render things, learning how light uh, light affects different objects and, and certain things. So you're constantly also, experimenting as you're yeah. painting. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a that's the beautiful part of art you can get through right there. Yeah, I know. I, I definitely understand that, that feeling of that it's not just about the end product or even like the idea you start, them, start out with the, in the beginning. It's that, that process of changing the way your ideas change, the way the, I mean, you start to learn new processes, new ways to, um, new, new techniques you start to use in your work. Um, but I also I stuck to, I stuck on what you said earlier about um, you said you were trying to expose you know the corruption and you know the racism and everything in the society and so I was wondering was this is this work like meant for people who like are on your side who understand the the, the problems the struggles the challenges that we have to go through um, as black people or is it for people? who don't understand? Are you trying to explain to them what it's like and show them what they're not seeing? Mm -hmm. I say it's for, I'd say it's for both because I think for me, it's 
uh, I feel like I am the voice for people that feel like they don't have a, a voice or they're too afraid to, to speak on these issues. Like for me, it's always been like a balance in critiques. It's just like how people will brush off the little details within the work and I will have to like constantly explain over and over again. So I'd say it's primarily for like the, the uneducated people and there's a sense of like it being like uh, uncanny or just like over the top. Like people could say it's like you could have chose any other way to to depict like corruption. Why would you choose a smiley face? Because it's like it's so over the top. Like it's like kind of silly. Like you could say this. I think the, the same thing with the Ku Klux Klan. Like it's kind of silly that you wear a, like a hood to like hide your identity. It's like a little like you look like a clown essentially. So I'd say it's for D and D character, like, yeah. Yeah. And names. yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. it's like a sick game that was created for adults. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's I for think, everyone, I'd say. I think the it's the big irony in it is what also is makes it so like jarring, and then the when you decided to remember the faces. Mm -hmm. So that being said, um, looking at the series of work, I'd like to hear from each of us. Do you think it achieves its message on its own or with the whole series as a whole, if it achieves its message a lot better that way? Should I scroll through them? I feel yeah. like the yeah. pieces separately are powerful, but I feel like... I don't know. I think that sometimes on their own, like I may, I'm turn, starting to imagine like this being in like a gallery space and one piece on their own will like, that will immediately grab your attention. I mean, I feel like one in itself, they tell their story and I think uh, they do it well. But I think also as a, like a um, exhibition, like if they were together, I feel like they create a space and like um, a world of understanding. Like you're not enveloped in this feeling, not enveloped in if you've been put into um, how this feels. You're around the chaos of some of these collages and the, um, the uncanny feeling you're being watched, it feels like. And I think that um, really does impact the way that I uh, interpret the work. I think seeing them together, I really, um, they kind of tell their story and they kind of like work off of one another. And I feel like together you really get the full, um, really get the full story. And I think together they, they work their best. I would agree with that. Um, Especially with the smiley faces yeah. that you picked with um, CSB and then also seeing the old American vintage photos. Yeah. Um, I think they play honestly, because from people I've showed your work to, um, mm -hmm. they're always impressed, particularly by those. Those always seem to be the favorite. But without the rest of your work, where to support it? they're lost on the message. Yeah. So if you feel that it's necessary for yourself as an artist to have this shown as a series, because I would say otherwise your message, because it's, you could look at it and I think you could, um, like the old photos on their own, I feel like those um, without the rest of your message just kind of fall into just like the un I would get it like the fakeness, the unhappiness that you hide under everything. Yeah. Trying to fake and be happy with the American dream. So I don't, they read less as an outcome of a negative outcome of society due to all the injustices and more as just like people who are faking being happy. Yeah. If that makes sense. You said it again, like, can you, like, summarize the question? Emily, what would you ask? Um, do you, in, in that way, would you insist, like, in a gallery setting, in an exhibition setting, having these all together? Mm. Oh, I see, yeah. Um, I'm split between, I think... For certain bodies of work, so for instance, like the vintage, like that could be uh, ex, uh, in an exhibition by itself and like the collage painting could be like a separate thing. I think they can, I think each individual piece uh, with this aesthetics can function separately, but I think to get the, the bigger picture, you have to have it all there. 
but I would I do want to consider like having shows where specific works are in the uh, exhibition and not like specifically I, I was thinking of doing a, a show that only depicts the the crux in my uh, my narrative and then the show would be called Smiling Faces so it would be nothing about CSB it would just be showing the uh, Smiling Face characters and the corruption. I definitely see, um, I agree with you, Renaissance, on that, um, that the smiley faces have a clear, like, distinction to them, aside from CSB. Um, I do like, um, in, like, the collage work, how the green and, like, the colors just seem to, like, that, like, just the switch, it, they just like are so vibrant. It feels like, like three dimensional. Mm -hmm. And um, the older vintage ones that are inspired from the photographs or your reference photos, those sort of have like a um, like washed out feeling, like almost depressing. Yeah. yeah. I don't really have a question. I just <laughs> that's perfectly fine. No, we want, no, that's fine. That's fine. We want we want the comments. Um. So I know I personally looked up a little bit of if we could go to a picture with uh, CSB, like what the individual? Yeah, an individual one. Um, so with Little Black Sambo, I know I had done a little bit of reading on it because I just, I didn't want to come in completely ignorant to what this was. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of, I was surprised to find that I, I didn't know the name of it, but once I looked it up, I definitely knew the pictures. Mm -hmm. Like it was something that was recognizable. Um, and I know from the reading I found, I thought it was interesting that it was originally meant to be Indian characters. Yeah. And then upon later on, they decided to change the names because they thought it would make it better. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Pretty bad either way. Yeah. Um, but what is your understanding of how that became a, I guess, racist caricature for and how does that relate to CSB? Um, I don't know. I'd say, I think it's weird. I can just say it was like uh, a racist, it's always been like a racist image. It's like the idea of like uh, an animal like uh, viewing the, the black body as like an idiot or some sort. Like, I think there's this one, there's this one video I saw, it was like a Japanese version of like the black Sambo. And it was like weird how he would come across these tigers and like, he would give, he would keep giving, uh, the, giving the tigers his clothes and eventually he would just be, end up uh, becoming naked. And so, and then what really threw me off is like, uh, so there's like, I think there's like five tigers and they're like arguing about something about who's like the best tiger. And so they end up running around this tree. And then what, I was so confused because they, in the narratives, like they ran so fast that they turned into like a pile of butter. And I was like, what? And then he <laughs> brings the butter to, to uh, his parents and they eat pancakes. And I'm just like, what? That's like a weird spin on the idea. But it's just like, it just didn't make any sense. You run so fast that you turn into butter. I think for me, CSB is like acknowledging that I, the idea of black sambo or the fact that some some of our peers don't even know what black sambo or black face is. And people are like, well, why are you talking about it? If it's like back then, it's like we're living in the now. Well, I say, this is affecting the, the now, like uh, it's a product of racial profiling, which leads to police brutality. So like this, you can't acknowledge police brutality without acknowledging the past. Like you have to constantly have this conversation about these issues if you want these things to die down. 
I mean, it's important to me. And I think it's interesting because I didn't grow up around that time when that image was created. But through the research, I've learned to understand that image and how it has like a, an effect on people or how it can make somebody feel angry to feel like I can say it made my mom frustrated when she realized what he was. Like she's seen the process of CSB, but to realize that he's based off this racist caricature, she's like, I hope you're not like selling this. I think there's better ways to be talking about this issue. I mean, I can see that because she's from another uh, uh, a later time, but this is my way of talking about this issue. Like there's no right or wrong way to explain an issue, but this is just my way. But I think it means something to say that an African American uh, male is depicting themselves and say that they feel like this character in a contemporary setting. So it's like, a, it's both like a, a reclamation of that image, but it's also not because the image has done its damage. So I'd say it's a reclamation when he's like green where nobody knows, but like through the, the depiction of the black and red, it's like, it's still that character at the end of the day, but it's not at the same time. There, I think, the amazing irony to this too is that in order to represent this to people and get them to pay attention without it feeling like it's offensive is that you have to dehumanize mm -hmm. your character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that interesting. Out of it in order for people to even give your work a chance to like look at and follow the character. And I think that definitely says a lot on our values and what we deem worthy talking about because whether or not it makes us feel comfortable. Yeah. Do we think artwork should make you feel uncomfortable sometimes? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazing that, um, that cartoons are like an easier way to tell or show like hard like things for people to swallow. Like if it's a cartoon, it's not as like serious. So it's easier for people to get their message across. Yeah, and I feel this that this character is like super important. I mean, I I did grow up. I mean, I live in kind of a country area, and so growing up, I did see like a lot of those like little boy holding the lantern, you know, who's he's with black face with red lips. That's a big thing out where I live. And I mean, they're not as round as much anymore, but that that image still stands. I mean, and it, it's still uh, I still feel the repercussions of like little black sambo, and I think that. Like today, even though many people don't know who is, like we are still battling the stereotypes that like, you know, uh, black people are like dumb or silly or goofy or whatever, and that we're not to take it seriously. I mean, if you still battle that, and I think it's important that you still use work or still use a character that reminds us of um, what, what, what once was and still is, just uh, not as, not portrayed the same way anymore. Not, people don't know that caricature anymore. But I mean, there are still, still so many uh, like old cartoons that still do reruns. Like as much as I love Tom and Jerry, like they did have uh, in a couple episodes, there was that black maid who was very stereotypical, dark with red lips. And um, I think they don't show it anymore, but I've seen it, you know, like as a kid watching um, Tom and Jerry. And I still think that as many people don't know this, what they're seeing, I mean, I think it's still out there. I think it's very important that while this is like a dehumanized uh, character, I think it's still really important that you use uh, like similar characteristics to um, Black Sambo. How did you create him? Um, I was, I've always been attracted to the racist cartoons. Like I always tell people, was like, I honestly find those cartoons more interesting to watch uh, than most of the cartoons that we have now because like their talks about so many issues or like anxiety, depression, racism, love, suicide. Like I think at a young age, you don't think about that. And when you look at it now, you're like, oh wow, I remember this. And it's really weird how like, I remember there's this one, uh, I think it was in Tom and Jerry where Tom was like falling for this cat. And like uh, at the end of the, this, the episode, like he wanted to kill himself. And I'm just like, that's really deep. Like you can see like, progressively over time like he was getting he kept trying to please this gold digger and end up like she ended up not falling for him so like there's these ideas there's these dark um ideas within my work well i'll say when creating him 
I just wanted to try to create a spin on the character. It's just like, how can I make it different and not uh, the exactly the same? Because I tell people I could have easily just appropriated an actual thing that's within history, but um, but let's see, what is it? But okay, give me a second. I wanted to create a different image while still um, acknowledging that idea. So, for instance, it's like he's green. So the green senses for a sense of anxiety or green can be, represent uh, feeling alienated. So he still has the attributes of of the Sambo character, but he's not that because the specific things that he has and doesn't have that relate to that character. So he's like in between both Sambo and not Sambo, but he's also based off like my body language. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, I think the way you did it was um, you did. It, I think you did it very well. That I definitely felt uh, Sambo in it, but I didn't. I like that it's not exactly him because I feel like your version uh, speaks to me differently in your work than. I mean, I think it's like a, a creative new way of ta like new take on it. I re I'm um, quite impressed with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to ask, and then Simon can edit this and switch things around as needed. Um, just for people who are watching, who are maybe not, they're not sure what code switching is. Do you think you could explain that? Give a quick explanation of that. That's easy. Um, everyone does it. You do it. I do it. Um, I'd say code switching is basically like you act a different, uh, different way. Uh, depending on your situations, like it's kind of like a fight or flight situation. So for instance, you talk, uh, Emily, you would speak differently to your colleagues than you would your boss or like if there's, if you're hanging out with somebody, you know, you don't like, you're going to have specific body language. Like you may talk, uh, more like annoyed, or if you're with somebody you like, you might be more bubbly or like, I say everyone has it, like it's built into the, the human psyche. I think it affects like people in the African-American community the most where I feel we feel like we have to act a specific way in order in order to feel accepted in society where I think I've got many times where people will say you act so white and it's like why because I carry carry myself differently or like I'm proper like I can switch back and forth like there's times where like when I'm angry I can be very like ignorant or aggressive but like it's like a code so switching back and forth back back and forth constantly it's almost like a, a nauseating feeling that you feel like you can't really be your true self and i'd say for me i feel like when i'm in the studio creating this work this is where like there's like no filter like i don't care what anyone says within my studio because it's like this work is like specifically like i say my work is for everybody but it's mainly for me like creating this type of work has made me actually feel good like to say that i actually would want to keep this rather than like, oh, I can do without it, like wanting to create something that's for me. That's what I would say is like the, this, the code I'd say is for me is like wanting to just do something for me, but to go off like the code switching, it's like uh, different situations. Like if you're like being interrogated, you be more nervous rather if you're in a calming space. So I'd say code switching is just acting differently depending on your situation. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a good no description. Um, and I, I do enjoy the fact that um, talking to you more personally about your work here, like with CSB, he, do you think you, f you feel good about making this too? Because you said like, this is kind of like, this is how you feel. Mm -hmm. Say it again. So, for you, like, it seems to be like uh, CSB is like your outlet. Like yeah. this way you are allowed to get those feelings out and act at how you want through your artwork without having people directly put that onto you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's my alter ego, I'd say. Like he's an yeah. extension of me. Like he's, he's a part of me or like I embody the character. Like he has my body language, like a lot of the 
a lot of the pieces where I do them more rendered out, like I actually use myself as a reference because like there's been times where I'd be very like outlandish or goofy, like I'm sure plenty of you have seen me being very goofy. And I'd say like, that's just like his nature. Like he's like not afraid to like be himself. Like I'm very different. I think uh, through the code switching, I act very differently. And just like with him, uh, he doesn't really care what anyone thinks. He just embraces that. And I'd say, uh, with me, like, yeah, he's a way of me to express like how I feel about certain issues and not, uh, have to feel worried about me, uh, being targeted or I'd say, I'd say he can, he can say something offensive and it would never, the character has like no effects So like, it would always relate to me because I created that character, but the character said it like, not me, but it's interesting how that affects the way you perceive the person or the creator or the person or the character itself. Like he's my outlet. Like I use him to talk about like insecurities that I have. Like one thing is important is that uh, I allude to being vulnerable. So like uh, naked, so my character is like naked and people or and like he has, he has like a penis and, and testes I'd say. So like for me, it's like, people's like, well, why didn't you render it out? It's like, for me, I don't want to render that out because people would fixate on that idea of that. But I want to allude to that, of the character being naked. So like, he specifically is like, just like being naked for me is just being vulnerable. So like being ex to accept the all sides of my personality and not being afraid to talk about it. Uh, that being said, you said you're, because I, I have seen a few of your CSB um, paintings and work where it's been more rendered out, it's been more humanized. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody have a preference over one or the other? And if so, why do you think that way? Is that to me or the, the group? It's to the group, it's to you. I'd like to hear other people's opinions on it. I don't necessarily have a favorite over the two. I quite enjoy the um, variety that you painted CSB in. And I think that's important because inherently with using a character constantly or like a reference that's always constant, it could be it could lose interest but for me i don't lose interest because of the variety and like the ways that you implement csp in your work yeah like the versatility you create him with and like i think that's an important part of his character the way that it can like adapt like it's fun because then moments like like the piece that we're on right now that <laughs> is a living character that has things to say mm -hmm. And it's a touchy subject for a lot of people too right now as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have a favorite. I think, I think maybe maybe one of them is probably the when I slow it down and like make it like feel like an actual physical being. Like that's probably one of my favorites. But it's like so hard because he's so different in each iteration, and it's like it's weird how like the first drawing of him. It's weird to see his evolution and how like. The first drawing I did of him was like this really crude, like children's drawing, just how seeing how it's evolving over and over again. And it's interesting to see that process, like how I'm curious, like how it will change in like the next like couple of years and if they'll look uh, any more different. Yeah, I think I like the ones that are um, like drawn out, they look more like, like, like he exists in this human world, in our human world. So I think that kind of, um, I don't know. I think that would, helps me, and I'll, I think like kind of brings the audience uh, into like this feeling of like this is about now. This is about here, and I think that kind of helps relate it back to like the way that we're living now, and like this is not just like about some fantasy world or about like the past. This is like um, this is talking about here now and what we're experiencing in this time. <laughs> I will say, I think it's, um, I, I would agree with Nakai in that, um, where personally, I like to see things further rendered out, but that's because 
that's just kind of how I am with most artwork. I'm always going to lean on to artwork that has that more extreme detailed rendering and everything. Um, but that being said, I think it's important to see constant iterations of CSB, not just for your viewers, but for yourself. Mm -hmm. that's your that's your form of exploration for you i think it's important uh it's kind of like how some art schools they will like someone a teacher or something they will have their students paint the same object over and over and over and over again for a whole semester for a whole mm -hmm. semester but that's what leads to the beauty of discovering new mediums and techniques because you, know, you can work. <laughs> then you're not focused on oh god i gotta create some new content i have to completely recreate a new character or something that's going to catch people's eyes it's like no we already have that mm -hmm. we already have that the rest now you just worry about that experimentation and I think that's something that's actually helpful for a lot of artists to hear. It's like, you don't need to constantly be like, original, 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 over and over again. You, sometimes it's better just to focus on something and let it evolve and become something new. That mm -hmm. adaptation. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, I think for me, it's it's been interesting this year just to seeing how my colleagues like you can see like the shift of like how they they view the character like it's like hit or miss sometimes like i remember when the character first i started creating the character it was like oh i really like this and then over time they just saw it so much it's just like why well, he keeps talking about it and it's like everyone has something that they do over and over and over again it's just like i i do it differently like i think uh for instance somebody will paint naturalistically my colleagues paint portraits naturalistically and they do that all the time people will blush over that and for me it's like i just want to do something like the only thing that's consistent within the work is the the actual character itself like nothing nothing within my body work looks exactly the same like everything has is some is completely different so it's just like there's it's just as interesting like as the beginning the middle and the end like if i stopped doing this character like maybe it would make more people happy but like it's just kind of weird how people's like uh, opinions of the thing change when they see it over and over and over again and then they're like i don't want to see it anymore but it's just like this is something that i'm passionate about and i'm trying to express that this is important to me so this is why i constantly do it over and over again because i don't want to stop at it doing this character or these other characters like i could say i could only fixate on doing him like highly rendered and then i could just like be completely good at that but i wouldn't want to fixate on just one idea like it's that constant feeling of i need to do this i need to do that rather than fixating on one thing yeah that's yeah this is a good discussion guys so far yeah. wouldn't you say Yes. Yeah. Um, Sean had a question, but his mic is whack. So okay. um, he was wondering if um, in the one, wait, hold on, let me get to it, where you like do the exploded view of like CSB in different ways and perspectives. He mm -hmm. wanted to know if you were showing us his insides to show us that we're like all the same on the inside. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I also think it's interesting. Um, I know you mentioned how like the different colors of um, CSB is code switching, mm -hmm. but um, I understand like green is like his general like one that mm -hmm. you draw him in, and then um, when you you mentioned that when people use like the specific like skin tone colors and the lips or whatever that it looks like blackface. Um, what mm -hmm. about in like ones like this where they're like red? Mm -hmm. I don't remember if there's another one where he's rendered red, but I've seen it before. Yeah, there's the one where he's melting. Um, yeah, those are, I think those are just color tests, but I've kind of like created a name for him. So like when he's in like the red and uh, a red and pink, he's um he's not CSB anymore. He's GSB. So that stands for grimy, slimy, blimey. And then the the black sambo one, he's B, B, uh, BSC. So uh black sambo cry me and so i'm thinking of other other different ones
so does the the color in this one specifically like does that is he like enraged right now what is what are we i guess supposed to be getting from the colors that you were used here from the different um, yeah. It's kind of like a test, like I use, I wish this was like in like person so you could see the work, but I, I, like I mentioned before, I use these optical things. So like it pushes and pulls with your eyes. So like these things actually like pop off, off the canvases so you can see like different things. And so red automatically comes forward and green goes back. So if you look with these lenses, Leona, Leon, I think you've seen them like with the lenses, how it pushes back and forth. So it's also like a, uh, a technical thing of seeing how different colors uh, affect the way uh, they're viewed through these lenses. So I think, I think his emotion is specifically within like his facial expression. So like the color isn't necessarily um, it can allude to an expression, uh, a form of expression. But I'd say his facial expression should be the main uh, point of how he feels at a certain uh, point of time. Do we feel the facial expression is strong enough to do so? I think so. I think they graduated uh, part of it. <laughs> but, uh, well, I don't really need that. <laughs> I know I've like seen in your process that you um you reference like facial expressions too, right? Off of um. Mm -hmm yourself when you make them mm -hmm. let's see what did sean say he said i wanted to say earlier when we are on the topic of cartoons like the idea of erasing black characters from cartoons and the idea that betty boop was supposed to be seen as a black lady but we already know her as the as the white but i feel like a lot of people don't know the original voice of betty was black was a black lady but through the time she has been sick severely whitewashed to the way we see her today. Oh. Yeah, I forgot the person she was um named after. Or made mm -hmm. um made after. Yeah. At one point. <laughs> yeah, I think there is part of like an erase erasing like through cartoons. Like you don't see that representation as much anymore in or it, when it was it was more of like black exploitation so like it wasn't like the true like there's like no true like definition of being black like there's all varieties of being black there isn't like a fixated uh view of what it means to be black so i say for me it's like this is my view of what to what it means to me to be black but like there isn't any other there's, I'm sure somebody else could uh, talk about this issue differently, but that's what I think is interesting about artists is that everyone depicts or talks about certain things in different ways. Like there's no right or wrong way of uh, talking about these issues. I think for me, I say if as long as somebody does the research about these issues, they have they have full capability to talk about the issues. Like I think. Uh, uh, a white person can talk about these issues, but they will also they would also have to know like where was the baggage of talking about these issues. So I think anybody could talk about a certain issue, but they would have to do the research and maybe talk to people that are from that community to understand a little more, rather than just relying on the research itself. So yeah, I mean that brings up a great point of like with representation of specifically African Americans in any sort of artistic form or culture, what what do we deem as acceptable? What is what is okay? Because we've obviously today talked about plenty of the ways to do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and um, very obviously wrong. So where do we I guess as individual artists, where do we lie on like what lines can we cross in depicting this? And of course, um, even with the content where that line is drawn and if it's appropriate for certain members of communities to make it and for others to, to not. I think as long as you're well-informed 
Um, I do think, like, certain people could, like, ha everyone has, like, the right to their opinion. But I think as creators, when you choose to, like, represent um, another culture, as long as you're, like, well-researched and, like, do things in, 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 a, not a, in a nice way, like, as long as you, like, do it justice and you, like, do your research, especially, like, when, like, physically, when you say representation, I think of, like, physical, just, like, portraiture and things, like, doing things justice, if you stylize it, make sure it's, like, respectful, I don't know, I'm trying to say words. <laughs> well, no, it, it's a hard thing to, like, really, I guess, verbalize, because I, I but I think it's, like, an, an important question we should be asking ourselves, especially now. As, as artists, like, art is what you can get away with, right? Yeah. Like, so, are we, should we set it up in a format where it's like, can you repeat that? I don't, I don't know. Should we be monitoring art? Should we be, no? Our yes and no. Nothing to say. I see it. I see it in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just, I don't know. I feel like, I don't. It's a touchy I subject. Like, what line are we supposed to put down? And like, when are we supposed to cross it? I feel like art should never be censored. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like everyone has the right to say what they want through their art. That's, where, that's what we have to express ourselves in. And I feel like, even if I don't agree with it, like, I don't care if your painting is the most offensive thing I've ever seen in my life. I feel like you have the right to say it. I mean, I'm not going to agree with it. But your right to show it, your right to express how you feel, that is, I feel like that's that that's like the only place you can say how you feel it's the only place you're allowed to express it and i feel like if i were to be filtered on something that i do i mean i have a lot of nudity in my work and if someone were like sorry you can't show boobs on your work anymore because they just don't agree with it i think that would kind of like really it really um i don't know i feel like it feels like i'm being silent and as much as like there's so much controversy in the world there's so many different things that people can say from different conflicting like uh, ideas and opinions and I feel like just because you don't agree with it uh, I feel like they still have the right to say it whether or not you agree that's your own right but like I feel like their right to say it is their right to say it and so I, I don't know I feel like it's different when you are um when you are like sh like broadcasting that like on television because like that is a di that's something that like people I don't know. I don't know. I guess that that is a little gets a little weird when it comes to like television. I feel like if it's something that's like for kids, like for um, like then maybe things should be censored. But I feel like when it comes to like uh, an adult like cartoon or something like that, then I feel like they have the right to say it, whether or not you agree. Okay, I mean, I guess we can turn it off if you don't want to watch it. But I know I don't know. I think when it comes to like gallery work, I feel like you should not be censored. Well, when it comes to making work that's very specific towards a certain, I guess, because we have tons of movements now, mm -hmm. like body positivity movements, uh, Black Lives Matter, uh, there's a whole bunch and uh, valid ones, very valid. Um, but we're um, and on we feel like to make and depict certain art that person should be a part of that community in order to do so like you should really feel those problems in order to properly visualize that for your viewer i think that is necessary yeah i feel like yeah. you should and i feel like in order for you to have a, like a voice on something you should really have felt that the impact you really felt the struggle in some way i mean i don't think that someone who for example, someone who is, I don't know, French should make work about the, about like being the hardships of being Hispanic. I mean, cause you're not, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you should know or be the work that you are portraying. Yeah. But I, cause I think after that is when you, is when it gets touchy. Cause I feel like that's when you can, whether it's on purpose or not, you could um, like characterize or caricature something by accident because you don't know you don't live it so you don't you, you might accidentally offend someone because that's not 
you're not showing something accurately. You don't know what you didn't live in. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, plus, Sean, he did throw in, he's like, we have to think of the history of censoring or degrading different types of art, such as in history, when, say, the Nazis and the Museum. Mm-hmm. Um, artwork that were not of high standard. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we we've, we've we're constantly um, battling with like lines of lines that we should cross as artists, whether it be our own insecurities of just getting over that hurdle and making something, or if it's the fear of backlash, or I guess what you're trying to get from your work. Mm-hmm. Renaissance, like, how w- how would you respond to backlash on your work? I mean, what's someone just <laughs> do? Like, is it like, w- would you take this as a moment to like teach, or would how would you respond? I guess. Um, it's a bit of both. Like, I just don't care anymore. Really, <laughs> it's just like I'm gonna keep doing the work that I do. Like, uh, yeah, I know the work is offensive and points. Like, but I don't know. For me, there's something fulfilling about a fan somebody just to say uh i got under their skin like i don't know for me there's this, that weird feeling of getting under somebody's skin or like seeing their faults because like people put up this facade like i can't be harmed or anything like i can be harmed too but i've just learned to be like if something offends me too it's just like is it was you have to think about you have to look at it from the side it's like was it really that offensive that i couldn't really listen to it or it's like also you just turn it off too but it's also to look at things from a different perspective like looking through the lens of a racist or somebody who doesn't go through that for me i think yeah it's a moment of teaching but it's also like at the end of the day i'm just going to keep doing the work that i want to do because like yes i will make work that's more catered towards like maybe the masses but like my work will always be fixated on what i think about certain things because at the end of the day like my thing is like why would i be doing this work uh I don't do it for the attention. For me, it's just like, I just want to create work. And it's just like, I don't want to fall in this line. It's like, oh, I, my audience doesn't like this. Like, yes, I know what my audience likes, but that sometimes I don't always want to keep doing that work. So I sometimes have to just do it for me. But yeah, I would use it as like a moment to teach people. But like, if somebody tries to bash it or something, I'll be like, yeah, okay, so what, you know? John said he a thousand, thousand percent agrees. I remember one of the first artworks I created in high school. I was called homophobic. I remember that. Um, and I remember that. And I was very upset um, that that happened to you. I remember um, when we, after we put up our, our walls, you had put up all of your, um, all of your work. And I was overhearing people that were not very happy with the amount of you know gay imagery and i had to like stop myself from being too yeah. angry i was like he has the right to express how he feels I and mean, there's not a lot of people out here that show um a show like this type this type of work and i think that whether you agree with it or not like it is this is how he portrays himself and also you know, so it's not it's that homophobic work I don't know. I yeah. thought that was really interesting that like people didn't care to hear how it was meant to be interpreted and just kind of put their own label on it and left it at that. Um, I remember that. That was interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe when I heard that too, I was like, wow, the irony here. <laughs> I know. I was like, so upset, and I was like, I was like, had to com- compose myself, and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm just getting upset because I know him, or if this is like genuinely getting to me. So I was like, trying not to punch people in the face. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I think it's so easy for people to let their how they perceive something get in the way of how the uh, uh, get in the way of artist intention. And I, I feel like a situation like that with Sean was that like, he never, in that situation, like no one asked him, no one stopped and was like, okay, well, this wasn't the intention. What is the intention? They kind of like cut him off. I was like, all right, this is how I feel. And so I'm right. And I think it's really important to like 
so sure you maybe you feel this way, but also to understand um, the artist's intention and what they meant. And even if you don't agree, to understand that this is someone's way of expressing themselves. And I don't know, I think that it's, it can be touchy and art's not always easy to understand or to agree with, but it's not there. It's not always there for you. It's sometimes it's there for them. Sometimes it's not even for you as an audience. Sometimes it's there for other people. And I, I think it's it can be quite touchy, but I think people don't always see that. While you may be offended, you're also you're dealing with someone's emotions, you know, like, and so you're severely offending them as well. It's not always just about you. And so I think it's you have to be quite careful when it comes to uh, being too harsh on artists. Mm-hmm. Well, we do live in a society now where it's like you see any sort of visual stimulation and it's normally pointed or you like it to have to do something with yourself. It's like constant me, me, me. Yeah. And we are always being created to it. Yeah. By media, always, always yeah. being created to. And I think it's... I, I think it's the point where when we're looking at artwork, we need to relearn that part of ourselves. When we're, when, we, when I mean, if any not, anything, use artwork as an outlet to relearn that type of thinking, because I don't think it's doing us any, any good. You know, I think artwork in a lot of ways, maybe we're losing the whole point of it of like it's 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 supposed to be something for empathy sometimes like where it's it's not about what you're feeling it's about what that other person is feeling the feeling they poured into that work it's it's not an advertisement for you it's not necessarily what's supposed to be most popular most like it's like this is this is feelings this is what we need to get back to uh, learning to be cognizant of other people's feelings. Yeah. I think people, yeah. Whether or not we like it or it makes us comfortable or uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. I didn't mean to do that. But um, no, you're good. (laughs) (laughs) I think people forget that like the, that like artwork tends to be a extension of your emotions they see it as like now it's a physical object separate from the person but it's still part of them and i think while you are in a in a place where you are to like you know talk about it and to you know say what you want to say but you know it is still an extension of this artist and like i don't know i feel like we should still be quite sensitive in that way like don't completely be like well you're wrong and stupid you know like <laughs> i think that like yeah. I think that like it's not like a like a like commercial work where it's like it's posted everywhere. So like if someone doesn't like it, like now it's taken down, like work is advertised everywhere. Like this is someone's um, emotions or feelings and their opinion, and I think they have the right to say it. And I don't know. I it, it is it can be quite touchy because like we're kind of running into. I mean, with like so much social media where things can be posted, we're kind of running through like this kind of blurry line between what is commercial and what is like your personal work because we do advertise it in so many different ways now that I think that's what makes why I think it's why it's so hard for artists to kind of like state their mind and to put their work out because like it's so um, out there people can pretty much destroy you if they want to and so I think um, the power people have they kind of uh, they, people underestimate the amount of power they have and the amount of say they have it with um, what is showing and what can be said. And I think we should be a little more conscious of that, if that makes any sense. Yes. Okay. I was like rambling for a minute, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of passion here. So that being said, I think uh, I think we can wrap it up on that note. We've had a pretty solid critique and yeah. definite deep discussion. Ooh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I want to thank um, any people who are viewing this um who put up with you know uh, this being our first segment to work on here that's okay um stop while you're talking also like big thanks to renaissance this work is incredible look at it yeah this is (laughs) i I didn't realize you added on these other ones yeah and they're really (laughs) beautiful oh yeah. yeah 
I I have a question about this though because I know you have another one of um CSB that mirrors uh -huh. in a way. Why did yeah. you not put it in here? Because it's not done yet. Uh, oh, okay. I finally I this is this uh I did that one last semester. The the CSB one they're both back at home with me, but I wanted to take uh both of them home to photograph, but I also want to finish the CSB one. So mm -hmm. these will both be in my thesis, but when um when I finish the CSP one, I'll get a nice photograph and it'll be uploaded to my website. So, cool. did you find this helpful? There are yeah, I think I found it very helpful, better than most of my critiques. Really? <laughs> wow! <laughs> uh, ten out of ten. IGN five stars. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe want to do a series too now. So now I might have to post my series from last summer instead of Go doing. Like, yeah. Yes. Do it. Do it. Oh man. Any, any work you have in progress, if you really want to, because we, we we can do that. What yeah. Did you say? Maria. Work in progress. We'll do that too. Oh wow. Yeah, we can talk about a body of work you have or that you have like done before and like any work in progress if you really want to. Fair enough. I mean, the work in progress right now. I am. Oh, it's a rough time. I want to die. So, <laughs> like, yeah. I get some input, but I kind of just want to like rip it off the wall and throw it away. So, <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. Wait, I won't, but I want to. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. I really yeah. appreciate this. I hope it was super helpful. Um, and I look forward to doing it for anybody else too who who needs it or who just wants a a nice conversation about their artwork a conversation yeah. about the artwork a chance to really express and put out there on this platform what you're about because you know we can talk forever about it <laughs> <laughs> if we could do it all day so <laughs> thank you everyone and i hope to see you guys soon all right have a good see one you see you